In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys 14 lessons or 14 takeaways that we can learn from the holiday shopping season last year, 2021. Uh, you know, 14 lessons, 14 takeaways, 14 things that you guys as marketers, as e-commerce sellers can learn from and not only implement next year for uh, Black Friday and the holiday shopping season in 2022, uh, but also most of these things are lessons that you can kind of start implementing either into your marketing or into your Shopify store, your e-commerce shop starting today. Uh, and I think a lot of these things are valuable lessons. Uh, before we get into this, you guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot that we can learn and a lot of takeaways that we can learn from this video. Uh, Black Friday sales were actually down, uh, I believe it was 1.3% from 2020. Uh, that may not sound like a lot, but that's almost $9 billion. So not only did the holiday season not grow in 2021, uh, but, you know, it's actually $9 billion less was spent uh, than in 2020. And one interesting stat that we'll wind up covering is that uh, the, the percentage of people who decide not to buy holiday gifts on an average year is about 6%. Uh, that was up to 12% this year. So that almost doubled. Uh, now, before we get into these lessons, I just wanted to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Voyager Digital. Voyager Digital is a cryptocurrency trading app. You can trade over 60 different cryptocurrencies uh, you can also earn interest or earn an APR on over 30 different cryptocurrencies and some of them are pretty high Cardano 4.5 percent uh, Bitcoin 4.75 percent uh, let's see polka dot 12 percent uh, the Voyager token 7 percent but even on common cryptos uh, like ethereum uh, 4.25 percent you know like I said Bitcoin uh, 4.75 percent. Uh, you know, even on common cryptos, you can earn a pretty good interest rate. And on more obscure ones or altcoins uh, like Polkadot, up to 12%. They also just recently rolled out a debit card. I believe it's kind of in beta right now, but it should be rolling out to the wider public in the near future. You can earn up to 9% cash, or I guess not cash back. You can earn up to 9% interest uh, on the funds you essentially have sitting in your debit card. So this isn't a cash back debit card like uh, crypto.com. Uh, but basically, let's say you spend $1,000 a month on your monthly expenses. Uh, you can put $1,000 USDC into your Voyager debit card. And while that money's sitting before you spend it on groceries, meals out, etc., uh, you know, morning coffee, uh, you can earn 9% on whatever is sitting in there. So pretty attractive, uh, very user-friendly app, very nice interface. Check it out. I'll put my affiliate link in the description box below. You'll get $25 signing up, and I'll get $25 for you using my affiliate link, full disclosure. Uh, but without further ado, let's hop into these lessons from 2021. Now, every year after Black Friday, uh, you know, a lot of businesses report their sales. We see a lot of studies and surveys and a lot of a lot of people sharing data about the holiday shopping season. And so what we did, we took that data and we're going to try to give you guys actionable insights, what this means for your business, what this means for your Shopify store, and how you can use these lessons to, to bring in more revenue, uh, to cater better to your customers, etc. So uh, lesson number one, buy now, pay later, sword. I'm sure you guys, if you guys follow e-commerce and kind of the payment world, uh, you're probably familiar with buy now, pay later. I know Amazon recently bought, I believe it was Affirm, uh, and I believe a lot of these stats actually come from Affirm. Uh, but buy now, pay later is getting hugely popular, especially among millennials and even more so uh, Gen Z. You're going to be see seeing and hearing a lot more about buy now, pay later. Uh, PayPal reported, so, you know, initially you had you had sites like, Klar or companies like Klarna and Sezzle offering these services where, you know, let's say you're going to buy an item for $100, rather than having to spend $100 up front, you do buy now, pay later, you pay $25 up front, and then maybe two weeks later, a month later, you pay another $25, bucks. 2 weeks later, a month later, you pay another 25 bucks until it's paid off. As long as you follow the payment schedule, this is typically interest-free, and I think why it's so popular, it's a lot easier than a credit card. Uh, they have much higher approval ratings than a credit card. So if you can't get approved for a credit card, you probably can still get approved for buy now, pay later. So it's becoming hugely popular uh, amongst younger generations. And it's nice that uh, it's interest free as long as you keep up with the payments. Um, but like I said, initially, this was Klarna, Sezzle, Afterpay. Uh, but PayPal actually started their own buy now, pay later service, uh, which is kind of different than PayPal credit of the past. PayPal reported their buy now, pay later was up 400%. Uh, overall, the use of buy now, pay later doubled. Um, 
And uh, buy now, pay later has been proven to lead to not only higher conversion rates, uh, but higher average ticket prices or average cart prices. So if in the past people normally spent $70 on your store, uh, maybe with buy now, pay later when they don't have to pay up front, maybe, they, maybe your average ticket goes up to $94 uh, among people using buy now, pay later. What's the takeaway or what lesson can we learn from this? Well, if you're not using buy now, pay later, you might as well use it. A lot of these buy now, pay later companies, obviously just like a credit card, just like PayPal, they're gonna charge you a percent for processing the sales. It's normally a little bit higher than uh, you know your average 2.9% or 3% that a merchant processor will charge you. It might be, you know, 4.5%, 3.5%. I've seen some of them up as high as 6%. Uh, but if you do decent volume and or if you negotiate with these companies, uh, you can typically get their rate down to about that of what you would pay to a PayPal or a Stripe. Uh, so again, the lesson or the takeaway, if you're not using buy now, pay later, you might as well. It, it's most likely not going to cost you anything or not cost you much more uh, than just accepting standard credit cards. Um, and you can likely convert more sales and uh, raise the average value per transaction. Uh, lesson number two, e-commerce as a whole grew. E-commerce soared in 2021. I'm sorry, 2020 and 2020, uh, 2021. Uh, E-commerce has been growing for years. It continues to grow even more so throughout this pandemic and seemingly will continue to do so. Target and many other stores closed in-person shopping on Thanksgiving and even Black Friday. Uh, Walmart had closed 60 stores during December for deep cleaning, uh, which, you know, as a side note, as a little rant of mine, makes no sense. You know, we know that this uh, this beer cough is a respiratory virus. It spreads through the air. So washing your hands, using hand sanitizers, wiping down surfaces, uh, though I guess it's good for overall hygiene. It does next to nothing for uh, the beer cough. Uh, so that's really just nothing more than theater. Uh, but the point here is that e-commerce is growing. Less people are going into stores. As we'll talk about later, more people are using uh uh, BOPIS or buy online, pick up in store. I think during the pandemic, a lot of people got used to using things like Instacart, uh, you know, buying online, picking up in store at Target and Walmart. And I think a lot of people have realized they prefer shopping that way. It saves some time, it saves some headaches. Um, and even if they're not really concerned about the beer cough, it's just an easier way to shop. So I think we're going to see e commerce continue to grow. Um, but yeah, you know, e commerce uh, grew substantially in uh, 2021. Uh, Oh, I guess takeaway, just e-commerce is growing. Uh, you know, even if you're a brick and mortar store, maybe you want to start putting more of an emphasis on uh, either your the e-commerce side of your business or even the, the buy, buy online pickup and store curbside pickup. Uh, number three, Black Friday is now a month long event. Uh, we've seen the creep for years. Uh, you know, Black at one time we just said Black Friday, then it was Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and then slowly year after year after year we saw you know one retailer wants to beat the next retailer to the punch. So instead of having a Black Friday sale, their Black Friday sale opens at midnight, and then you know the next store, Toys R Us. Uh, wants to beat Walmart to the punch. So they start opening up on Christmas Day at, at or I'm sorry, Thanksgiving Day at 9 o'clock at night because they want to beat Walmart and Target to the punch. And then the next retailer says, we're going to open up at 4 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and next thing you know, you know, Black Friday just creeped earlier and earlier and earlier. And as somebody who runs e-commerce stores and as somebody who's a marketer, uh, you know, Black Friday, I, I've seen over the years, you know, first you started marketing Black Friday on Black Friday. Then it was on the, the Wednesday before Black Friday. Friday, then it was on the Monday before Black Friday. And I noticed this year I started getting Black Friday sales and, you know, sales emails, SMS messages, etc. Uh, about, you know, the beginning of November. So uh, Black Friday is starting a lot earlier. Um, and this kind of piggybacks off one of the earlier stats, or I think off one of the later stats we're going to share. Uh, but 60, 63% of people uh, shopped before Black Friday for their holiday stuff. And 54%, over half of people, were done with their Christmas shopping uh, by Thanksgiving. So what does this tell us with the actionable lesson here? Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't start your Black Friday sales early, over 50% of your customers are going to be completely done shopping by the time your Black Friday email goes out. So you may want to consider starting your Black Friday sales or even just calling it you know, a, an entire holiday season and starting it in early November. Uh, lesson number four, uh, what types of deals are buyers looking for? You know, every year we see surveys from shoppers and customers like what type of deals are you looking for? Uh, the minimum deal that's going to get people excited is 25% off or more. If, if you're offering a 10% discount, it's not going to get your customers dicks hard. 
Uh, it just doesn't work. You know, most e-commerce businesses have coupon codes all over online for 10% off, 15% off. Uh, if you call up an e-commerce business to place an order over the phone, their customer service departments are going to be handing out 10% off coupons like it's water. Uh, in order to actually excite people, you're going to have to offer a 25% or more off discount. I realize not every business can afford to do this. Not every product has these margins, uh, but I think that's something that's important for you to know. Beyond 25% off plus discounts, what most customers or shoppers are looking for is free shipping followed by free gifts. So if you can't offer a 25% off discount, a lot of people like to see free shipping. Um, and then another thing a lot of people like is free gifts. So, you know, spend $100, get a hat. Spend $100, get this free gift. Uh, if you guys want to set up deals like that, um, you know, Shopify natively kind of sucks with the type of uh, deals that they offer. If you want to offer more deals, if you want to offer gifts or, you know, different bonuses like that, uh, there's a great app called Ultimate Special Offers. It's, uh, I think it might be free uh, for like some limited services. I think it's only like 20 bucks a month, even if you want to use everything that they offer. Uh, but you can easily set up deals, you know, when a customer spends $100, uh, they get a free gift or, you know, uh, uh, BOGO deals, buy this item, get a free gift, spend over this, get a free gift, uh, discounts, all types of deals. So if you're looking for a good deals app, Ultimate Special Offers is the best one I've ever found. Um, let's see, lesson number five, SMS, uh, which is text message marketing, is gaining mainstream traction. Uh, that's important for you to realize. Uh, you need it. Let's see, I'm trying, trying to read my writing here. Um, okay, so SMS revenue is up 10 times over previous years. Uh, I am seeing more businesses getting started with SMS marketing or text message marketing, but I think a lot of businesses are still sleeping on this. Uh, I actually like SMS a lot more than email. Uh, you know, if you send somebody an email on a Friday, uh, they may not check their email until Monday morning. So SMS is a great way uh, to get to people in a more timely manner. I think a lot of people are also jaded to email marketing, right? They just kind of expect their email to be full of spam. A lot of people actually use a separate email address to sign up for offers and email lists uh, than their normal email, so it's not something that they're checking all the time. Uh, with SMS, you know, most people check a text message within 60 seconds, 90 seconds of getting it. Uh, people aren't inundated with spam messages on SMS. When you get a text message, you most likely expect it to be from a family, a friend, a coworker, your boss. So you're going to check it much more quickly. But uh, it converts a lot better than email, uh, and it's much more timely than email. So what's the takeaway or the uh, actionable lesson here? If you're not already utilizing SMS marketing, I would highly suggest you start building an SMS uh, email, uh, an SMS list. Um, and if you want to set that up, I know Clavio now offers SMS marketing. You can also do so with services like Attentive, Retention Rocket, and others. Check out the Shopify App Store. Uh, I would probably recommend Attentive or Clavio. Uh, Retention Rocket wasn't terrible, and there's there's plenty others out there. If you guys have suggestions uh, or you know tips, advice for other people to get started with their SMS marketing, uh, drop them down in the comment section below. And if you have an SMS marketing service, uh, that you'd recommend, uh, feel free to drop that as well. But this is going to continue to grow. It's going to eventually wind up passing up email within a couple years, and I would highly suggest that you guys get on it. Uh, lesson number six, more people than ever didn't buy gifts this year. I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of this. Uh, in a typical year, 6% of people don't buy gifts. This year, that's up to 12%. Now, I'm sure some people are maybe like Muslims or people who don't celebrate uh, Christmas, but I think a lot of people are just realize are, are just trying to be less. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they they don't like how consu consumeristic isn't a word. I'm having a brain fart here. Uh, they don't like how holidays have become so you know shopping focused. How it's all about spending money and buying senseless things. And I think a lot of people are choosing to have experiences over buying items. So maybe instead of exchanging gifts with your family maybe you guys spend that money going out to a nice restaurant or taking a trip together so more people than ever didn't buy gifts this year it almost doubled from six percent to twelve percent um i don't know that there's necessarily a lesson there but i thought it was something worth noting uh number seven supply chain issues and logistics and shipping issues were a huge problem uh this has been a problem for a while just to go off on a little bit of a rant 
Um, you know, Pete Butterberg is the transportation secretary. The guy was the mayor of a small town, uh, South Bend, Indiana, uh, where Notre Dame is. I mean, this town had like 40 buses. If I were deciding who I wanted to be in charge of planes, trains, automobiles, boats, and shipping in the U.S., uh, it would probably be somebody who ran something larger. I mean, shit, even get the guy who runs the Chicago CTA or the New York subway system. But uh, Pete Butterberg wasn't really uh, prepared to do this job. And on top of it, he was home on paternity leave with his husband uh, for about three months during, you know, while the economy melted down uh, with supply chain issues. In my opinion, if you're somebody who puts country first, you would be like, look, this is a great opportunity and a great job. Um, you know, I do think it's important for families to bond and fathers and mothers to stay home with the kids if possible. I think that's great. Uh, so I'm not criticizing him for that. But maybe as somebody who puts the country first, you say, look, you know, I'm I'm not in a position in my life right now to where I can devote 100 percent of my attention uh, to the country and to this job. So maybe I got to bow out. Uh, you know, life is, uh, you know, the, like Dan Pena says, there's no such thing as work life balance. There's there's only work life choices. So if you spend more time with family, your business is going to suffer. If you spend more time with business, your family's going to suffer. Uh, but you got to find a balance. And I don't think uh, Pete Butterberg did a very good job of uh, kind of helping with this logistical issue. Um, but yeah, logistics were a huge problem. Uh, a lot of businesses were out of stock of certain items. A lot of the raw materials that manufacturers need to make certain products were out of stock. Even if you had the raw materials, a lot of packaging goods and boxes were in short supply. Uh, so that was just kind of an ongoing problem for this holiday season. Uh, a lot of people started shopping earlier. We mentioned 54% of people were done with their holiday shopping by Thanksgiving. Uh, part of that may have been due to the fact that the White House told everybody, like, if you don't buy your Christmas gifts in October, they're not going to be available. There's going to be supply chain shortage. So that may have led people to buying earlier, as well as people realizing that, you know, shipping was a mess and items were taking longer to get. Um, actionable lessons from this, I, I guess, be prepared, carry a little bit more inventory, uh, try to ship things out faster, uh, but realize this is an ongoing problem that's going to continue into 2022 and uh, do what you need to alleviate that as much as possible. Uh, number eight, this one was, was interesting. Crypto accounted for 3.3% of purchases, which was up from 1.5% pre-pandemic. Uh, I was actually pretty impressed by this. I think 1%, uh, or I guess, uh, you know, Previously, they used to say less than 1% of the population uses crypto. Uh, I think among millennials and Gen Z, it's up to about 50%. But that's just people who have bought crypto, right? Like if you look at the percentage of people who actually use crypto on a day-to-day -day basis or use crypto to, to pay for goods, that number is much less lower. Let me know if you guys were surprised by this or not surprised by this stat here. Drop a comment down below. Let me know. But uh, I was pretty impressed that crypto accounted for 3.3% of Black Friday shopping and holiday purchases. Uh, what actionable lessons uh, can we take from this? You know, it really doesn't cost you anything to, to offer crypto payments on your online shop. Uh, there's a bunch of apps that allow you to do this. I know Voyager allows you to do this. Crypto.com allows you to do this. Uh, Coinbase allows you to do this. BitPay. There are a ton of services out there. You may want to consider adding it. It's not really going to cost you anything. I wouldn't expect a huge percentage of sales to come in paying with crypto. Uh, but if it doesn't cost you anything to do and it's relatively easy to set up, why not do it? Lesson number eight. Uh, what did I double up? Okay, well, maybe I made two slides. Um, oh, okay, so this, this is funny. Here's why we did this. So what, WTF, what the fuck? I thought this was interesting. So I was using Canva to put together this little slide presentation. And as soon as I used the word pandemic, they interrupted me with this warning. Uh, coronavirus COVID-19. In light of the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak, we recommend checking the World Health Organization's website for the most accurate and up-to-date information. We've also created a series of templates to help you share important health information faster. It's just like, what the hell? You're, you're like monitoring what I'm putting in my slides just so that you can educate me on COVID protocol. I thought that was fucking weird. Uh, lesson number nine, BOPIS slash curbside pickup grew uh, 
One in four dollars made by Walmart this holiday season was made via buy online pickup in store, where you make your purchase online, then pull up next to the store, text them, and they run the stuff out to your car, throw it in your trunk. Uh, it was also up 18% as a whole for retailers. Um, this doesn't apply to most of you guys, most likely, since I think most people have an e-commerce store, uh, but not a brick and mortar presence. But if you do happen to have a brick and mortar presence, you may want to consider putting more of a focus on curbside pickup or buy online pickup in store. Uh, if you do do this, make sure your inventory is accurate because there's nothing worse than somebody placing an order online, showing up at your store and you don't have the item that they need. Uh, one other thing to consider, even if you don't have a traditional brick and mortar storefront, um, if you have a warehouse that you're actually at, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five or something like that, you may want to consider allowing people to pick items up directly at your warehouse. This will allow people to not have to pay for shipping. Um, and also it allowed people, especially during Black Friday and even really into 2022, when we know there's shipping delays and issues, uh, this will allow people to not only not pay for shipping, but not deal with the delays that shipping brings. So something to consider. Lesson number 10, abandoned carts were up 169% over 2020. Uh, what does this tell us? People are, you know, what are the reasons somebody might abandon a cart? So one is maybe somebody's looking for a coupon code. Uh, number two, maybe somebody's shopping around. They, they get to the cart and they're like, you know, I wonder if I can find this item cheaper elsewhere. So they go shop elsewhere. Um, it might be that your shipping fees are too high, but realize that uh, uh, abandoned carts were up really big in 2020, 2021, I'm sorry. Uh, that tells me that people are shopping around, so you're going to need to be more competitive. You're going to need to offer uh, great discounts. If you can offer free shipping, con consider adding it. Uh, but I thought that was worth mentioning. Lesson number 11, uh, I kind of already touched on this. 54% of shoppers were done shopping by Thanksgiving. I guess I kind of doubled up on this one. Um, but yeah, you know, you better start your Black Friday uh, deals earlier because if you wait for Black Friday, over 50% of your customers have already finished shopping. Uh, number 12, over 70% of purchases made online were made on mobile, uh, with some of the e-commerce shops I run, as well as my Shopify store, uh, you know, it's like 95% of our, our shoppers are online shoppers. Uh, 2014 was the first year that mobile passed up desktop. Uh, so what actionable lessons can we take for this? Well, your website should be designed, you know, take a look at your numbers. You can see this in Google Analytics. You can also see this in the back end of your Shopify store. Uh, take a look, but I'm, I'm guessing probably well over 60%, maybe even upwards of 90% plus of your shoppers are shopping on mobile. So what does this tell you? If you're designing your website and you have to kind of design it, you know, for anybody who's ever designed a website or designed emails or anything else, you know, things are going to look a little bit different on mobile because the screen is vertical as opposed to a desktop computer where the, the screen is more of a landscape mode. Um, and in the past, you really kind of had to juggle. I need things to look good on mobile and I need things to look good on desktop. Try to make them look good on both, but realize that most of your shoppers, most people browsing your website are going to be on mobile. So when you're designing the website, slant towards making the mobile, uh, you know, interface better. When you're designing emails, you know, keep in mind that most people are going to be reading these emails on mobile. Just kind of overall design the uh, the user experience for mobile. Lesson number 13, shoppers continue to support small businesses. Uh, there was a 500% jump in people shopping with small businesses in 2020, and that carried over into 2021. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us have seen a lot of our Main Street brick and mortar retailers, small businesses, local businesses go out of business. Uh, this has been a trend for a long time. You know, going back a decade or more, Amazon was putting bookstores out of business. Uh, but through the uh, the beer cough pandemic, uh, we saw how the government favored large businesses like Walmart, Home Depot. Uh, Target and Amazon while shutting down small businesses. Uh, I think a lot of people realize that small businesses are an important part of their community. They want these businesses to stick around and they're willing to support these businesses. Uh, so I would encourage you guys, not only during the holiday season, but with all of your shopping, if you can avoid shopping at Walmart, if you can avoid shopping at Target, if you can avoid shopping with Amazon, try to buy local as much as possible. And last but not least, lesson number 14, subscriptions grew uh, by 35% year over year in both 2020 and 2021. Uh, the pandemic normalized subscriptions. Uh, if you guys are wanting to implement subscriptions in your website, check out a service like Recharge. Uh, there's plenty of others. When we talk about subscriptions, we're not necessarily talking about subscription boxes. Uh, we're talking about, you know, offering your products as subscriptions. So let's say I sell CBD. 
CBD is something that people take on a regular basis, right? Like if CBD helps me with inflammation, helps me with stress, helps me sleep, it's probably not something I'm going to buy one time and never buy again. It's probably something I'm going to buy month after month after month. So why not offer a subscription service? That way my customers don't have to actively think, okay, I got to go in and buy my CBD for next month and come to my website. Uh, so they sign up for a subscription service. Now, most of the time when when uh, a business does subscriptions, they offer a discount. So if you're willing to lock yourself into a subscription service, and you're not committed, you can cancel it at any time. But if you're willing to sign up for a monthly recurring charge from me, maybe I offer you 10, 15, 20% off. Why this is good for the customer, they save money, uh, and they don't have to remember to make that purchase every month. And why it's good for your business is uh, you know there's no chance of somebody deciding to buy CBD from a different seller next month. There's no chance of them you know seeing a good deal on an, uh, a competitor of your site and deciding to buy with them, right? They're, they're essentially locked in uh, and they're going to purchase from you every month. That's revenue that you can count on. Uh, so <coughs> takeaway lesson here: Why not offer subscriptions on your business? Uh, I would recommend using Recharge, but I'm sure there's a bunch of other services out there. Uh, if you're watching this video and have a recommend recommendation, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Uh, but that wraps up our 14 lessons or our 14 takeaways that we learned from Black Friday in 2021. Not only should you keep these things in mind for Black Friday in 2022, uh, but most of these things are things that you can start implementing right away, right? Like some of these were Black Friday specific, uh, but buy now, pay later, sword. Sign up for a service like Sezzle or Klarna. Uh, e-commerce sort. If you're a brick and mortar business, make sure you put more of a focus on e-commerce. Uh, let's see. You know, people like discounts, people like free shipping, and people like free gifts. Try to implement that. Uh, start building an SMS list and start using it. Um, you know, keep in mind that supply chain issues are going to carry on into 2022. Uh, you might want to consider adding crypto payments to your site. You may want to put more of a focus on buy online, pick up in store, um, or curbside pickup. Uh, you know, make sure, you know, keep an eye on your abandoned carts. Make sure you have some system set up to, re to recover abandoned carts, sending out emails, sending out push notifications, sending out SMS messages. Um, let's see, uh, you know, design your website and your emails for mobile users because that's where most of your customers are. Uh, you know, realize that people do want to support small businesses. Share your story. Uh, you know, talk about the CEO of the, your company. Talk about your, your you know, founder story. Uh, have an About Us page on your website. But people want to support small business. Give them a reason to. And then lastly, subscriptions grew. So implement subscriptions into your website. Uh, I'm starting to go hoarse and I'm tired of talking. So we're going to wrap this video up. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please do me a favor. Click that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell to get all notifications. I'm going to try to be more active with making videos here in 2022. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful 2022 and I will catch you on the next video.